Now, our closing moment, we look at health in nation building, and we have a public health physician, Dr. Abby Abraham, here with us. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. We are in a situation where everybody's talking health, but does everybody really have to talk health to keep our nation going? Well, it's very interesting you say that, because like we all probably know, health, in a sense, is the bedrock of the individual. And um, you can see that because of the COVID crisis and all the crises that have been happening over the years, there has been such a big gap with regards to what we know about health and really what is happening. I believe people really need to talk about health. You know why? Because health impacts every part of development. Health actually impacts agriculture. Health impacts education and health also impacts uh, uh, national development. Um, without health, uh, there is really nothing. Like you know, uh, someone who has lost his health cannot really um, embark on anything at all. And that is why they say health is wealth. But the funny thing is that wealth is health. Health is a Greek. Without, um, proper, um, without proper agriculture, without nutrition, nutritional food, and uh, without you know, lots of, um, uh, lots of uh, um, education uh, into agriculture, we, we will not survive. You know that uh, between the, the, the greatest time of growth of a child is between one and five years. His brain needs to be fully, um, there needs to be full nutrition at that time, between one and five years. 90% of a person's growth is between one and five years. And if the, the person's growth is stunted just because they cannot eat or they don't have nutritious foods, then what do we have? We have a workforce that is declining, you know, workforce that is you know, just uh, stagnant and uh, cannot compete within, uh, in 2020. So I believe health is now the pivotal, one of the most important aspects of, edu of development that we really need to um, uh, look into very, very closely at this point. So what you're saying is that um, to have a healthy nation yes. begins from a child's infancy. Um, no. To have a health, sorry about that, okay. <laughs> I will shock you a bit. Okay. To have a healthy nation begins from the mother's, oh, the even, mother even of the child. the child is yes. born. Before, yes, starts even from that time. Because we can see that uh, the rate of infant mortality, that's the number of children dying you know, before the age of one, child mortality, the number of children dying be, be, before the age of five, heavily depends on the mother's physical, emotional, nutritional, financial mm -hmm. status. Okay. So um, it is extremely important to look after mothers even when they are pregnant. Um, mm -hmm. So it really starts before the child is born. When they are yes. pregnant or even before they get to the well, point of pregnancy. Thank you very much. Ooh. Even before they get to the <laughs> stage of pregnancy. It's about the chicken and the egg, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it, you so, know, it just goes on and how, on. How does that tie into nationhood? I mean, how does that tie into governance and how does that tie into the society becoming more health conscious? Do yes. we need laws? Do we need policies that will keep it going in there? Well, I believe that um, we need to go grassroots. Um, we need to really go grassroots in terms of primary health care, the health care for the masses. So we need to get to a stage where the government is involved, which the government is already involved, but concerned individuals, concerned committed individuals, stakeholders, um, civil organizations, we all need to come together and embrace our healthcare system. We need to not just say it is a government thing. It's not a government thing. It's a personal thing. It's a, your personal responsibility to be healthy for yourself and also healthy for the people around you. Can I be healthy for yes. Aleo? <laughs> yes. If Alera were your wife, yes. yes. Well, <laughs> no, not even, even as my neighbor. <laughs> even as your neighbor, as your colleague. Like, for instance, you see that your, your neighbor is losing weight. You know, it is your responsibility to say, excuse me, what's going on? Are mm. you eating well? Mm. Do you have any emotional problems? Is there any depression? You know, you have domestic issues. It depends, of course, on how you know, close you are to the person. But I think it is a collective responsibility for all of us to be responsible for the nation's health, as opposed to saying it is the government. And, mm. uh, and, and just the government can do it. 
No, I think it is a collective responsibility. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, can I just connect this to this COVID uh, thing now? Yes. And uh, how uh, gov government says there's a lockdown. Yes. And we are not obeying the lockdown. Yes. And it's, it's us who are going to be affected by the not obeying the government. Yeah. So that ties in is with what you're saying. You're being healthy for yourself, Absolutely. not for the government. Absolutely. It is you who are going to die or fall ill and be yeah. in hospital for weeks and weeks with COVID yeah. because you have not obeyed what the government mm -hmm. has said. So yeah. it ties in exactly that. If you're healthy, you're healthy for yourself, yeah. not for the government, not for anybody else Absolutely. but yourself. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the issue with COVID is that lots of people feel, well, maybe the government hasn't done enough. I think the government is doing a good job in terms of, you know, bringing out information and stuff like that. Okay, fine, they might have imported some, you know, some of these so-called lockdown policies that do not apply to all, but we are getting there. I think we all need to be, you know, be relaxed about this. We are getting there. Okay, fine, you import something that, you know, works in other countries. Fine, they see the lockdown. It doesn't work in lots of communities, but we are now having think, think tanks who are actually going into the root of things and saying, okay, fine, perhaps we need an intelligent lockdown. So, for instance, you lock down the mosques and all and the churches and all the public functions, but you get people to wear masks. You know, you, 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 the lockdown itself, you get them to wear masks, they will have to go out. People, 10 people who live in a room are all breathing on themselves. They, they have to go out. So, okay, they go out, but they, they wear masks. We know that when everybody, when, in fact, studies have shown, the few studies we have, that when a, a community, a nation, all wears masks, the tendency for COVID to spread reduces by 90-something percent. Actually, 90-something percent, because you know that when you wear your mask, assuming you're a symptomatic carrier of COVID, nobody knows you have COVID. You cannot. You, it is, you cannot transmit it. So, um, you know, so in the end, it is a collective responsibility. And I think, I, I still feel that um, we are doing a, a fairly good job uh, of, of uh, trying to, to ward off um, the COVID crisis. Dr. Abi Abraham, a public health physician, thank you so much for coming into Help us close the show today on a healthy note. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And with the doctor, we come to the end of the program for today. We hope to bring you a fresh edition next month, May. And we hope that the lockdown mm. will be over by then. I am Alero and wishing you all the best. Please stay safe and stay home and stay out of COVID-19's way. Indeed. I'm Neo Taibwe. Thank you for letting us be a part of your day. Please be your neighbor and your brother and your sister's keeper. Be nice. Reach out and let's help all of us stay healthy so our nation stays healthy. See you again.